Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Ying's Pie. So this episode we're going to be talking about autoencoder, okay? And uh, the illustration that we're going to use is copied from this blog provided by Keras. It's an open source blog, they provide the code, I think it's a good platform to use. This is a structure, okay? We have some sort of image, that's your data. Uh, it could be colored, it could be black and white, it could even be three-dimensional. You establish many layers of neural network. Here, you pass this information from left to the middle. Uh, in the middle, you see this squared representation that is really a compressed version of the information preserved in your data set. And then in the end, you have multiple layers to decode uh, what you have compressed and you reconstruct it the input data, uh, which should look like the original picture uh, if everything goes smoothly. Uh, so in this episode, we're going to replicate this kind of architecture. And this is what we call an autoencoder. So with that being said, let's get started. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is to initiate library. I'm going to say from Keras layers import input dense from Keras models import model that's going to give me my library next i'm going to set up my dimension and this is going to be the size of encoded representations so i'm going to say encoding dimension and define that as 32. here the next step is to set up input placeholder and this is really just to get your environment set up for your neural network architecture so I'm going to say input image is defined as input shape 784. And this 784 is really uh, dependent, I'm going to say comment, dependent on the size of your picture. And then we're going to encode. So encode. And that's going to be encoded dense encoding dimension, which is defined above, activation function, ReLU, and uh, we're going to attach input image. And this input image is defined as a placeholder here. And that's our encode. After that, we're going to do a decode. And as you can imagine, uh, if you want, in the middle, you can introduce more layers, uh, but this is a simple autoencoder. So we're just going to introduce uh, input and output, and it's going to be two lines of code. Uh, here I'm going to say decoded, and that's going to be defined as dense 784 activation, and then here I'm going to say sigmoid, and then I'm going to say encoded, and this encoded is defined here. So as you can imagine. From your original data, it's a picture. Uh, we send that picture into the neural network, which is the dense layer. Uh, we run our algorithm, we prop the information forward, and then the information comes out. It becomes a layer that is the same size as your picture shape, right? And then hopefully, if everything goes smoothly, it will, re it will let you to reconstruct your picture. So I'm going to run that. And then let us map input to its reconstruction. Uh, so here I'm going to say auto encoder is defined as model input image decoded. And then I'm going to say decoder equals to model. Uh, as you can imagine, this is going to be input image I and input and uh, encoded. Uh, I have a typo here. Okay, great. Now we have our encoder and decoder. Uh, what's left is compile it. So I'm here going to say compile. Uh, we're going to call our model auto encoder compile. And the optimization, we're going to use uh, optimizer. Excuse me, that's a typo. Optimizer is equal to add a delta. Okay, uh, I'm going to say loss equals to binary cross entropy. Okay, great. Boom. 
after that, I'm going to get my data. So I'm going to say keras.datasets import minist. Uh, we're going to import numpy as mp to process our data. Here I'm going to say xtrain underscore xtest underscore. That's going to be minist load data. And that should take a sec. Okay. So this gives our data. Uh, before we actually train it, we want to, uh, you know, normalize all the values between 0 and 1. Uh, so here I'm going to say x train, x train as type uh, float32. And that's just to ensure uh, the data is processed correctly in numerical format. I'm going to do the same thing with test. Uh, x underscore test as type float32. Uh, scaled by 255. Uh, the reason is 255 is because the values of uh, the grayscale takes value between uh, 0 to 254, I believe, and in total uh, that's 255 values. Now I'm going to go to X train. I'm going to reshape it. I'm going to say reshape length X train uh, MP prod X train shape one to the rest same with test x test is x test reshape length x test mp dot prod x test shape one to the rest okay uh, let's check it print x train shape print x test shape and they really should match right if it doesn't match then something's wrong so we have our architecture for autoencoder. We have our data, it's scaled. Now what's left is training. I'm gonna call my model, it's called autoencoder. Uh, I'm gonna do a fit, right? I'm gonna throw in x train, x train, and then I'm gonna give it epoch equals to, you know, let's just say 10, okay? And then I'm gonna say batch size equal to 256. I'm going to make a shuffle uh, to ensure that uh, the training process is indeed robust. And uh, I'm going to set that as true. And then what's left is validation data. And here I have x test, x test. Uh, here's a little caveat that's worth mentioning. Conventionally, uh, you train a neural network, here it's going to be x train and y train, right? It's a supervised. Um, but in the framework of autoencoder, that is not the case. Uh, in autoencoder, you actually throw the x train into the position where you originally throw in y. And that's really because this is unsupervised. Okay, so let's run that. As each epoch goes, uh, we are feeding information forward into this dense layer, uh, encode it, and then decode it uh, to the output. Uh, in the output layer, we look at the loss function and then we go back up. And this one cycle of going down and back up, that's called one epoch. And each epoch, uh, as you can imagine, the validation loss is getting smaller. And they better get smaller, otherwise something's wrong. Okay, now we're done. Uh, now, to visualize what's going on and what have we done with this data set by using autoencoder, let's make some visualizations, okay? So here I'm gonna say, encode and decode some pictures. Okay, so encoded images, and that's gonna be encoder predict x test. Uh, and then we're gonna do the same thing as what we did in the beginning. We're gonna decode it, okay? Images, and that's gonna be defined as decoder predict encoded images. So you send images in the encoder and you send the output of your encoder, which is defined as encoded images, into your decoder. And then you're going to plot that. So we're running that. Okay, I have an error. I don't think I actually defined this decoder. Uh, so let's go back up and make sure we have that function coded. Uh, here we have autoencoder. That's going to be defined as a model. We have an encoder and that's a model input. So all that's correct, and uh, I believe what I lack of is 
this decoder model. So here I'm going to make a coding box below and I'm going to say create decoder model. Okay, I'm going to say encoded input and that's going to be input shape encoding dimension. And uh, a dimension is going to be a placeholder. Uh, I need to define a decoder layer. And it's going to be auto encoder layers, uh, reshape it. And then I'm going to throw that into the model. And I'm going to define this as a decoder, which is a model input with encoded input. Uh, that's the dimension. Um, and then the decoded layer uh, with encoded input. Decoder layer. That's a typo there. Boom. Okay. Now we can run this. Done. All right. Now what's left is the actual plot. Uh, so here I'm going to say import matplotlib pyplot as plt and then I'm gonna, you know, print out say 10 pictures. Okay, uh, so how many pictures to display? And then I'm gonna do define a figure, and that's gonna be a, a fixed size, let's say, you know, uh, 20 by 4. And then I'm gonna use a for loop. So for i in range n, uh, which is defined up there, right? And I'm going to say x is plt subplot to n n plus 1. Uh, I'm going to say plt im show x test. I'm going to call the ith picture. Uh, we need to reshape it to be 28 by 28. Why do we need to do that? In the original model, uh, the output layer actually has 784. 784 is like a long giant vector. That's not going to look like a picture. Right? So this is actually going to need to be reshaped into 28 by 28 before that could look like a square, which is a picture. So that's why I have 28 by 28 here. Uh, once we have that, uh, we're going to make it gray. Okay, and then we're going to get x. So I'm going to say ax get x axis set visible to be false. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing with y axis. Uh, so get y axis. I'm uh, going to set visible false. This is just to ensure that when we print out a picture, uh, it's just a picture. I don't want to see any axis behind it. Uh, now we're going to reconstruct it. So I'm going to say ax plot subplot two by n by i plus one plus n okay and then i'm gonna say a x uh, excuse me i'm gonna say plot im show decoded images uh, the ith picture reshape 28 by 28 uh, i'm gonna do plot gray and then we're gonna do the same thing with the axis so i'm gonna copy those two lines down here um, and, uh, we're almost there. Uh, after that, we're just going to do a plot show and that should give us, I think I have an error somewhere here. Okay. That's a typo, uh, plot gray. Uh, let me rerun this. Boom. Back then I had two additional pictures because I entered two times and there are errors. So the picture actually remembered in the memory. Uh, but now I rerun this code and that's what it looks like. So let's go back here. You throw in the data. We go through this encoding and decoding process. And then the output, we reconstruct the pictures. And if things go smoothly, it should look like the original picture. So something like that is definitely interesting. Uh, it helps us a lot in computer vision. helps us a lot uh, when it comes to uh, preserving and reconstructing the information in pictures and in videos. And uh, this is definitely a whole new branch of research that one can do. So I hope you liked today's episode. Uh, hopefully I made this code easy for you guys to understand. And if you want to support the channel, give it a like and hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you in the next episode.